Well, today, President Biden issued a sweeping executive order regarding the safe and secure use of artificial intelligence, a wide-scale effort to impose nationwide standards on the fast-moving technology. The order includes calls for new standards around AI safety and security, legislation protecting Americans' privacy, and supporting workers as AI changes workplaces. We're joined by Arati Prabhakar, who is the director of the Office of Science and Technology at the Policy uh, and Technology Policy at the White House. Arti, great to have you here with us today. First and foremost, what are the key elements of this particular executive order that perhaps could shape where artificial intelligence is in the workplace, is in schools, is in the people's, uh, the people of America's fingertips on a day in day out basis? It's great to be here with you today. Thanks for the chance to talk about this. It's a really big day at the White House. As you said, the president signing an executive order today that is the most significant action any government anywhere in the world has taken on artificial intelligence. Uh, very much to your point, the president's been clear from the beginning of this work that AI is one of the most consequential technologies of our time. Uh, and he's also been clear from the beginning of our work with him on this that we've got a job and that job is to make sure that we manage its risks so that we can seize its tremendous benefits. And exactly as you said, AI is already in people's lives today. It's in our work lives, it's in our personal lives, and we know that that's going to accelerate with the new advances that are coming. Uh, this EO, is this executive order, is about making sure that we lay a foundation so that we get AI right. So, Rathi, how does this executive order do just that? What are some of the steps that you're taking, the priorities that you have laid out that helps to mitigate some of those risks? Yeah, uh, again, a whole series of different actions. The, the EO is broad, the executive order is broad because the technology and its implications and its applications are broad. Uh, one dimension, a really important one, focuses on safety. So how do we know uh, when more powerful models are being developed? Uh, there are provisions in this executive order so that the government will be notified when companies build the next generation of extremely powerful AI technologies will we'll get access as well to their uh, independent testing that they do on those models. That's important for awareness. But it's also about how uh, the safety of cyber systems or how biological technologies are developed with AI. Uh, there are provisions here that allow us to get better at cybersecurity, that allow us to have a better handle on potentially dangerous biological uh, work that's going on. That's all in the safety category. There are also provisions in this executive order that are about bolstering privacy. For example, uh, provisions that focus on how the government uses data that it buys from data brokers. This is important to every individual's um, uh, privacy. There are provisions about making sure we don't embed bias in algorithms. That matters if you're getting a loan. It matters if you're trying to get a job. It matters if, you, if you're involved in the criminal justice system. And in all of those areas, we want to make sure, and this EO takes the actions now to get us on a path where bias isn't going to get embedded. That's just a sample. There's much more that's about supporting workers as this technology comes into their lives, making sure government uses AI in powerful but responsible ways, uh, and that we do the testing, the development of the technology, the standards that allow us all mm. to know that AI is safe and working for us. And Arathi, when it comes to the executive order that's been laid out, it has been criticized from some uh, industry players, but also from some lawmakers as well. Senator Ted Cruz has been one of the uh, vocal opponents, I guess you could say, or maybe one of the people that have been raising uh, some of the concerns. He said that this executive order undermines exactly what AI technologies promise to do, create efficiencies, spur economic growth, and improve our lives. What's your response to that, some of the criticism that this executive order is getting? Well, um, I've, I've been in the science and technology and innovation business for my entire professional life, all the way back to when my hair was still black. That's a lot of decades. And what I'll tell you is that innovators and technologists, we're, we're trying to do this work to achieve the great aspirations that we have as a country and as a world. But sometimes we get a little enraptured of the technology and what has to come along with the technology is really thoughtful, uh, ways to make sure that we're using it in safe, really uh, responsible ways 
uh, that really reflect our values as a country. And if you step back and you think about it, every country in the world is trying to use artificial intelligence in a way that expresses their values. They're trying to build the future that they care about. Uh, the president has been clear from the beginning that we are living in a time in which American leadership in the world requires American leadership in AI. And that's about getting it right for the American people and in doing that, being a beacon for the world. That's what this executive order takes a great step forward on doing. Arathi, a portion of this executive order talks about supporting workers and addresses how generative AI and artificial intelligence more broadly is impacting jobs and workplaces. Um, and also, at the same time, the same administration is also very much in support of unions and the ability to negotiate and uh, make sure that the workers can identify and address where AI might be a companion or an augmented intelligence that they're working alongside while at the same time protecting their earnings. But you think about the headcount that also could be impacted at many of these workplaces too. I wonder how the administration is thinking about that calculus and the kind of labor force participation that could be impacted where there are, in this case and even today, negotiations that net out for auto manufacturing facilities where it's known that there's going to be more robotics, it's known that there's going to be more artificial intelligence, and what impact that could mean for the totality of workers that are in that industry. The, the, the work here starts exactly where the president always starts, and that is with, with deep respect for the dignity of work and workers. And he's been a tremendous champion for workers in every area that's reflected in, in this executive order as well. And if, again, step back and think about what's happening. We've had generations of automation that have, that have dramatically changed work, what's happening with AI, uh, and especially generative AI, chatbots and image generators. Now, a lot of professions that no one ever thought were gonna be subject to automation or, or, or having machines be able to contribute meaningfully, all of a sudden we've got a whole new raft of professions where people are thinking about this and we're, we're starting to see some changes. So this is a pivotal time to get this right as this new generation of AI technology comes out and breaks into even more fields. So how, how do we do that? Well, first we start by understanding what it's capable of doing and then uh, taking very thoughtful action about how we can make this technology allow workers to do more and to earn more rather than using this technology to surveil waker, workers, to hollow out jobs or to eliminate jobs. And we know the history shows us it can come out either way. And we're gonna be very clear that we're taking the actions to get us on the right path for every worker in America. Rather, when it comes to workers, specifically AI talent, what exactly the U.S. needs to do in order to make sure that they have the employees that they need that's skilled appropriately for the AI revolution and what the future of artificial intelligence looks like? What are some of the priorities uh, that you see the Biden administration doing or needs to do in order to make sure that that worker need is met here in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, we can talk about the technology all day long. We know that big things happen with great people. And so that's important for the country as a whole. And it's important for the talent that we're gonna need inside of government as well. And this executive order has provisions on both of those topics. One set of provisions is about making it easier to get great people to come into the country from other parts of the world. Uh, that's a place where, where, of course, we've always wanted to be a beacon and for, for, for decades, if not centuries, we have been a beacon for great people around the world to come to the United States and to pursue their dreams and to help build this country. We want to make sure that that keeps happening in this AI generation. And so there are provisions about that. And then turning to the, the important need to get great talents of all different sorts in public service. Uh, I've had the great privilege of spending half of my professional life in, this, in, in, pri in the private sector, uh, in companies, and as an investor, but also half of my professional life in government. And I can tell you that for people who are passionate about getting this right for the country, about achieving the big things that are possible with AI, uh, one of the most satisfying things that's that you can do is to come contribute to your country by, by joining in this work. And so we'll be taking active measures as well to recruit and find great talent to move this forward inside of government. 
Arathi Prabhakar, we thank you so much for taking the time to join us here this morning on Yahoo Finance Director, of the Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House. Arathi, thanks so much. Thanks so much.